Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Bree, and uh, today I'm talking about Friends, the TV show. But it's not just a TV show, it's a cultural phenomenon. Um, and the question I'm asking is, Friends still worth it? You know what I'm saying? Like, or is it dated? Is it, is it time to let Friends go? So Friends, if you don't know, which, like, I don't know how you don't know, is a sitcom about six friends who are in their 20s, late 20s, mid to late 20s, living their lives in New York City. And um, you got three men and three women uh, and a brother and sister in the mix. And you got some like romantic entanglements, but we won't get into that. So Friends is basically this sitcom that literally took the world by storm. It came and it just, it hit hard. Every fucking buddy watched Friends. I couldn't, I watched it week after, I couldn't wait for the next episode of Friends. I was very, very sad when it ended. Um, I bought the entire season on DVD. And I have HBO Max or Max or whatever the hell it's called just so I can watch Friends. Literally just for Friends. I watch it all the damn time. Yesterday or the day before, I can't remember which day it was, but one of the days earlier in this week, I watched the Friends reunion. I think it was yesterday, but I'm not 100%, so don't quote me on that. Unless you check my tweets. Um, And it just got me in the mood for Friends again. It was a damn good reunion. Like, of all the reunions I've ever seen, this is the best reunion I've ever seen. Obviously, I've done my top 25 greatest tv shows of all time spoilers friends was number one it i mean not only is friends number one but friends is 10 spots above number two it is like removed it is in it's in its own stratosphere it's friends and then everything else down here everything else down here friends is like in its own world it is just fucking awesome it's phenomenal but we have to talk about it. It's 2023. We've made progress on uh, LGBTQ is issues and representation. You know, we've had things like Modern Family come along. Friends was fairly, in some ways, at least in, at least in queer issues, progressive for the time. Um, it had a lesbian couple. Day one, episode one, it introduced a lesbian couple, and they were throughout the whole. They were a mainstay throughout the whole series. You had a transgender person, and I'm going to say person, I'm going to avoid pronouns because the show uses male pronouns, but it's obvious that the person is female, but I'm going to avoid pronouns just for that because it's one of those, maybe they didn't understand at the time because we hadn't quite really, you know, I mean, transgenderism has been around forever, but it's one of those things that has wasn't studied very well, so a lot of people didn't... It wasn't very represented, so people didn't have the words for it, you know? It was like, we knew what we were, but we didn't know how to tell people what we were. So, you know, we've evolved since then. We've learned since then. And there's even a, there's even a lesbian wedding in one of the episodes. But, like I was just talking about, it's kind of problematic in that respect as well. There are a lot of homophobic jokes in this show even though it has you know basically homosexual characters there's a lot of homophobia in this show and it and it's not handled as tastefully as they did on seinfeld where they're like oh not that there's anything wrong with that you know no there, there was none of that it was literally they would make gay jokes and it was like gay bashing jokes and they would just you know laugh and move on uh but there's also that you know there's an episode that I want to talk about that I, I feel is problematic. It's the episode where Phoebe's um, ice escapade husband from Canada who needed a green card shows up and, quote, comes out as straight. And they play it like a gay man coming out as, as gay. And they, you know, it's like they're making fun of coming out. You know, because she's like, have you tried not being straight? And he's all... I know I'm born, I now know I'm born this way, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's it's kind of like a play on, I mean, it's like, it's almost affirming, but it's also kind of shaming in a way. So it's, it, I'll say it is a bit problematic. It's still funny, you know? I mean, as a gay person, I watch it and I still laugh, but I also cringe. 
So I laugh and cringe at the same time. And that's the beauty of Friends. It's one of those shows that just hits you. It hits you hard. It has heart. And, um, you know, uh, it, like I said in my uh, 25 greatest TV shows of all time, I have seen everything that Friends have been in. Every one of the six cast. If they're in it, I'll watch it. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, David Schwimmer. Um, I forget the name of the woman who plays Lisa Kudrow. I was going to say I forgot her name, but yeah, there it is, Lisa Kudrow. If they're in it, if the six core are in it, I'll watch it. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll watch it. Because Friends impacted me that much. It was like just such a huge part of my life. I can't get enough of these characters. I have to see these actors in other things. I'm like, you know, oh, look, Phoebe's in the movie. I have to see this movie, you know. And, yes, I've seen them all. All, even the shitty ones. Not not TV shows, because I don't watch a lot of modern TV shows, but movies. You know, and, hey, there was a period where Jennifer Aniston was in every damn movie that came out. You couldn't get away from Jennifer Aniston for a while. Um... Which is kind of ironic, considering she had her start in a fucking B-movie. <clears throat> the Leprechaun, of all things. Not her literal, literal start, but that's what she did before she did Friends. So, you know, she could have been one of those no-name actresses that we remember from Leprechaun. She could have been. Instead, she's a mega star. She's not a superstar. She's above superstar. She's a mega star. She's, they all are. And... So, in that regards, yeah, Friends is still absolutely worth rewatching. You have to take it with a grain of salt. You have to put it into the cultural context of the time. And speaking of progressive in other areas, it's not in that respect. It's the widest fucking cast on TV. All the extra, I mean, it, it waits all the way until season eight or season nine before it introduces a main character who's a character of color. Like, it, damn near the end of the show, they finally said, oh, I guess we better sneak in a person of color in here before we get roasted. So it is definitely one of the whitest TV shows ever produced. I mean, it's, it's you know, Snow White and the Seven Friends. It's what it is. Um, so in that regards, it's not as progressive as, like, say, Seinfeld was. But, you know in the other regards it is so it's one of those like i said you got to take it, it, it take it for what it is and what it is is a damn fucking good show just fucking phenomenal i watch all 10 seasons two or three times a year sometimes more i i literally will sit and watch friends until i finish and then sometimes i'll take a break and sometimes i'll turn around and go back to the start and start over you know, I mean, I watch a lot of fucking Friends. It's it's just, it's like a big chunk of my life. 